All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Phantom Weather Channel. Today's video, we're going to be talking about an impactful storm event that will start this weekend with an initial low pressure system bringing wintry weather to the northern tier of the United States, along with some potential severe storms in the eastern plains. And then we're going to see another development of a low pressure system immediately behind that that is going to be bringing widespread rain and thunderstorm activity with a surge in severe weather. <music> Before we do get started with this one, I would ask that you guys do subscribe to Phantom Weather Channel with notifications turned on. I'd also ask that you drop a like on the video if you want other people to get this information as well. Let's get right into it here. And first off, we are speeding this up to early Saturday morning of this weekend. We're looking at our European high resolution model for this video, as we usually do. It's a great model. Uh, but we're speeding this up again to early Saturday morning. We're seeing a 997 low over the Nebraska Kansas border at this point. That's a pretty strong low pressure system. It's got some gusty wind surrounding it here. That could be a concern throughout the duration of this event here. You can see that we are looking at some gusty winds because these uh, black lines around the low pressure system here, these are called isobars. The tighter that they are, we are typically looking at stronger winds in those areas. And we also have a little bit of some heavy snowfall firing up here in the western plains and eastern Rockies as well that we are keeping an eye on. Now as we get a little bit further along into the day on Saturday, uh, that low is going to continue its way northeastward, now situated in eastern Nebraska. Give or take some locations with a grain of salt. We are going to have to refine some of these uncertainties here as we get a little bit closer to the event. We are still, still looking at widespread mixed precipitation to the north of this low here and to the southeast of the low from the central plains down into the northwestern Gulf states. We are looking at widespread rainfall as well. As we get into Saturday evening, that low is now going to likely be located over western Iowa. And by this point, we would have seen some potential scattered severe thunderstorms making their way across northern Missouri and Iowa. You guys will see that later in the video. Uh, and by this point, we are looking at widespread gusty winds. Uh, and then ahead of this trough, we're going to be seeing mainly rain and thunderstorm activity here for the western Great Lakes and into the Missouri Valley where the warmer air is making its way into the system. But that trough of cold air is immediately behind it and to the north of it as well. And that is allowing cold air to feed into the system, bringing us some widespread light to moderate snowfall in the northern plains and the extreme upper Great Lakes here. Separating that rain and snow, we are likely to be looking at some freezing rain here that could get moderate to heavy at times brief in northern Wisconsin throughout upper Michigan. Overall, this is probably going to be a light icing event, but only a little bit of ice is enough to cause some pretty big problems, so we do have to keep an eye on that. As we get into late Saturday night, that low is going to continue to strengthen. Those winds will also strengthen with it, with that low situated over western Wisconsin. We are still looking at widespread rain and thunderstorm activity from the Ozarks all the way through the Great Lakes. The winter weather is going to be mainly into Ontario at this point, but a little bit sticking around there in the western Great Lakes. We have two low pressure systems at this point. One of them is the one that's bringing us most of our precipitation there in Wisconsin. And then another one there, weak at this time, uh, is developed over north northeastern New Mexico. As that moves northeastward, uh, it's going to bring some precipitation along the Red River Valley, and eventually that's going to break off into its own storm system here that has widespread heavy rain and severe weather potential with it. So that would kind of be the case by early Sunday morning when we see some thunderstorms developing along the Red River with that new low. And as we get into about midday on Sunday, right around noon, we're going to be looking at widespread thunderstorms that have developed here in the Southern Plains through the Tennessee and Ohio Valleys and all the way out into the Northeast here. The environment is good for thunderstorms to develop. Uh, the amount of energy that will be in place is in question, but we also have very strong wind shear in the area as well. So I do expect a severe weather event uh, Sunday afternoon through Sunday night, uh, maybe continuing beyond that, but predictability gets a lot lower. Uh, I'll show you guys that a little bit further along throughout the video, but again, severe weather potential is possible here. As we get into late Sunday night, we're still looking at widespread, potentially severe thunderstorms all the way from eastern Texas uh, up into the lower Great Lakes, and that will continue eastward. The rain is going to weaken until we get into Monday evening, and at this point, it's going to be uh, two areas of precipitation here, one of them being mixed precipitation in the northeast. The interior northeast could be looking at some snow at this point. We see a little bit of a gap in the mid-Atlantic before we look at more uh, rainfall activity along here for the Gulf states. That'll just continue to 
weaken as we get into early Tuesday morning, and we're looking at a widespread plume of colder air making its way into the central and northern tier of the United States. So before the event actually occurs, right as it's starting up, here to be the snowfall that already accumulated, we already would have seen uh, about one to three inches there in the northern plains and even more so in the northeast. But after the event occurs, uh, you can see a pretty big plume here of four to six plus inches of snowfall. Uh, we're looking at, you know, that typical higher terrain enhanced heavy snowfall there in the Rockies. Good four to six plus inches there in the northern plains. And then as we get into the northern Great Lakes, there is a possibility that we could be looking at six to eight inches of snow, maybe even a little bit more. By the way, this is the National Weather Service blended model. So this is taking National Weather Service forecasts and computer data together and combining it up. This is not the European model. Neither is it going to be for the snow or rain that I'm going to show you guys. So this may not match up perfectly. Uh, with what you saw with the European model, we would have also picked up a few additional inches of snow there in the northeast. The six plus inches is not all from this event, so keep that in mind. And then immediately after potentially severe storms again make their way through the central plains in Missouri Valley, we could see some snowfall immediately after it. Or uh, actually, I believe immediately before it uh, because we're going to see colder air initially. So uh, here's the total accumulated ice that is expected. Uh, according to the National Weather Service blend. And again, it's going to probably be a pretty light icing event here. Uh, up to a tenth of an inch of ice accumulation is going to be quite likely from the northern tier of the Great Plains through the northern Missouri Valley, through the northern Great Lakes, and then again in the northeast here. Uh, but again, even this is enough to cause some problems, make sidewalks very slippery, roads very slippery in spots, especially when we're seeing those heavier bursts of freezing rain. It doesn't take much. Here's the total quantitative precipitation forecast, or QPF, that is expected throughout this entire time. Remember that there will still be thunderstorms at this point in the Gulf uh, by the time that the storm is kind of wrapped up with the main uh, set of events here. So this would be the rainfall that is expected up until that point, and a good one to two inches of rain is expected from the Ozarks up into the eastern Great Lakes. Uh, as we get further north into the northern plains, uh, northern Great Lakes, some of this might actually be snowfall and freezing rain because this is just the water content that is expected to fall out of the sky. And remember that one inch of rain generally uh, is equivalent to 10 inches of snow. So that's 10 times as much snow as it is melted precipitation, which is a wild thing to think about. But that's kind of the situation we might be seeing as we get a little bit further north. The actual rainfall is mainly going to be centered over the Ohio Valley and surrounding vicinities. Now, we do have a risk of some scattered severe weather on Saturday, so the Storm Prediction Center already has outlined a small area where some scattered severe weather is going to be possible. This would, at this time, be equivalent to a slight risk in northern Missouri and central Iowa. This includes Des Moines. Uh, so we could be looking at maybe a damaging wind threat here. The wind profiles are enough to give us a supercell threat, potentially, uh, as well. Again, dew points are going to be in place. Temperatures are going to be in place. Wind shear is as well. However, there's not going to be a lot of energy for these thunderstorms to work with. There will be a little bit of it here and there. Uh, it is going to be a pretty unstable environment in the surrounding vicinity. So there's enough evidence here to tell us that we could be looking at a few severe storms with at least minimally a damaging wind threat throughout the central plains or just throughout uh, Iowa and northern Missouri. But uh, there is still some uncertainties at this time. So this is the GFS model, by the way. This is not the European model. We're speeding this up to about noon on Saturday. Temperatures are going to be in the mid to upper 50s throughout Iowa and northern uh, Missouri at this point. And typically, dew points and temperatures over 55 are generally enough to sustain thunderstorm activity here. Um, but we are going to be seeing this throughout the eastern plains. Here's our dew points at this point. Pretty rich. We have dew points here in the mid to upper 50s being pretty widespread throughout the eastern plains and Missouri Valley. Again, this is enough borderline to maintain some thunderstorms developing. We also have a little bit of CAPE in the area as well. So again, CAPE stands for convective available potential energy. Again, basically what it is, just the measurement of energy in the atmosphere that the thunderstorms have to work with. We call this thunderstorm food because the more of it that the thunderstorms can eat up in the surrounding vicinities, the more growing those thunderstorms can do, they can intensify a lot easier. So CAPE is pretty crucial for severe weather events. And typically if we're looking at a lot of precipitation in the area, which we could be looking at on Sunday, that eats away at the CAPE in the area. So typically we need stuff to clear out of the vicinity and give it some time for the sun to beat down for us to get significant instability. That isn't always the case, uh, but that is often the case with severe weather events here. So uh, also typically CAPE values over 1,000 are very 
sufficient for severe weather. We don't need this much, but it is helpful. And the values are going to be just under that here in eastern Nebraska. So there is enough. Uh, the bulk shear surface to 500 millibars. This is pretty crucial for helping these thunderstorms organize and rotate. If we are looking at uh, these shear values here in these pinks and reds, we know that we are looking at some especially strong shear. Uh, if it is over top of those storms in an area of good instability, and especially those storms that are off on their own, this may mean that the thunderstorms could be super cellular. Uh, a stronger shear is going to help these storms rotate because it's literally the rotation of wind in the atmosphere. So uh, here's our situation at this point. Again, you can see these widespread gusty winds on the screen with these tight isobars, but we have some uh, light to moderate rain underway as well. And even though it doesn't look impressive here, uh, this is also a low resolution model. Uh, so as we get closer, we'll have a lot better model data for severe weather. But we're looking at widespread precipitation in the area uh, throughout Missouri, or throughout Iowa and Missouri at this point. And this is going to intensify a little bit as we get into about 3 p.m. on Saturday. And this activity will continue to lift northward. So as you can see, overall, the GFS isn't showing anything too impressive. Uh, but there is enough evidence here to support a scattered severe weather event. Uh, on Saturday. I am expecting this to continue on a wider scale on uh, Sunday afternoon through Sunday evening and into the overnight hours at least. Uh, so there is the possibility, and I actually think it is pretty likely here, that we are going to see that second low pressure system form and then eventually pick up some precipitation over the Red River before it moves northeastward. And if that does happen, even though that is going to kind of be our breeding ground for another severe weather event, it is going to bring widespread precipitation along with it due to the moisture in the area. So again, uh, if we see too much of that out ahead of the new storms that do develop, this could mean that we don't have enough energy in the atmosphere to help these thunderstorms become severe. But if we do, that can change the whole equation. So as we get into about 3 p.m. Central Time on Sunday, we're looking at widespread temperatures that will be in mainly in the 60s here throughout the Missouri Valley. And even according to this model, up into the lower Great Lakes as well. I don't know if we're going to see this. It is possible, at least according to this model here, we will see. But the Red River Valley surrounding vicinities, even through the Ohio Valley and the Gulf states, we could even see temperatures here that are in the 70s and 80s, if you can believe that. I know. Oh, March 1st at this moment. By the way, today is the first day of meteorological spring. It doesn't actually start until March 20th. Uh, and then here's our dew points at this point. Very rich throughout uh, the southeastern plains, through the Ozarks, Missouri Valley, Ohio Valley. Sustainable for thunderstorms even into the lower Great Lakes and the mid-Atlantic up into the western portions of the northeast. So we got a pretty good environment in terms of moisture and temperatures for thunderstorms potentially severe to occur. But in general, again, there's not a lot of cape in the area. These thunderstorms don't have a lot of energy to work with. They don't have a lot of growing action that they can do. There is some of it here, especially as we go further south uh, into the northwestern Gulf states and into uh, even central Oklahoma. And there's a pretty good amount of it here in the uh, Ohio Valley as well, but the storms are going to be uh, pretty far behind this. And again, here's the bulk shear, very strong shear in the area, which is definitely going to help these thunderstorms. This is probably one of the big things that is giving us a possible severe weather event uh, through Sunday night uh, because we got so much shear in the area with a little bit of energy and uh, some pretty good conditions in terms of temperatures and dew points as well. Here's what the storms actually look like at this point. Uh, they're pretty much dead center in that area of the widespread significant shear. Um, and again, there is some instability here for these storms to work with. So yeah, these could be severe at this point. And these storms will increase in coverage as we get into the overnight hours. And eventually as we get towards about midnight, this is probably what the situation is going to look like. You can see where the trough is there in the south central U.S. But far out ahead of it, we see a strong low over central Illinois. Gusty winds are going to be a problem here, most likely surrounding it. But we have widespread organized thunderstorms from the Ozarks all the way into potentially the lower Great Lakes, at least in terms of precipitation. It's going to be interesting to see how far we have a thunderstorm and, and possible severe weather threat, how far north that happens, because I think even the lower Great Lakes could be looking at a uh, possible severe weather threat on Sunday night as well. So uh, we'll have to see. That activity is going to continue to move northeastward as we get into late Monday night, really even at this point, just very early uh, Monday morning. And this model is actually showing these temperatures continuously warm, it looks like, throughout the overnight hours. So this is another thing that we'll have to uh, see how this renders off between the models. As we get into early Monday morning, 
uh, that strong low is going to be situated over lower Michigan. According to this model, behind the trough, we're looking at widespread snow potentially. However, this doesn't appear to be something that the other model was showing uh, throughout Wisconsin. So I would take this with a significant grain of salt. I don't know if we're necessarily going to see this here. What I am confident about is the widespread rain activity uh, throughout the northwestern Gulf states and into the southeastern Great Lakes. So that is going to wrap it up for today's video. If you guys did enjoy it and you want to see more of my videos, be sure to subscribe to Phantom Weather Channel. Also, be sure to drop a like on the video and share this video out on social media if you guys want other people to get this information as well. You guys can also follow at Phantom Weather on Twitter if you guys want to get weather updates over there as well. But until the next video, stay safe, and we'll talk to you guys back here in the next video.